Rahman Rahim. Good evening, everybody. I would like to thank you for coming for a special night with uh, Mr. Namir. Mr. Namir, one of the famous uh, teacher around the world. And, <laughs> and he came, by the way, from UK. And he got assignment, and this session is sponsored by uh, Al Mashriq Al Arabi and Mashriq Training. So I would like to request him to introduce more about himself, inshallah, okay. and you are welcome for Bahrain Health and Safety Society in our monthly forum. Okay, Please. well, thank you very much. Uh, I appreciate <coughs> the warm introduction, and rest assured, I've been pushing for this for a long time <laughs> to say, if I'm here, invite me to come. This is for the benefit of the whole uh, team here, and it's a great pleasure to be here. And thank you for the invite and for making the necessary arrangement. And thank you for taking care of me. That's the important bit. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Um, well, good evening, gentlemen, and welcome. And uh, as Mr. Yasser mentioned, I am actually based in the UK. I am a, a freelance health and safety consultant. Um, I've been coming to the region now for over 17 years and my first encounter here in Bahrain was with my special and best colleague Mr. Hassan Ali. I remember when I was at the National Safety Council he welcomed us and I've been with dealing with Hassan all this time so he's more of a colleague and a very close friend and I know quite a few of the members here who I have taught in the past and um, and it's a good thing to bear in mind you haven't changed at all um, you're still looking young but I have aged <laughs> okay I'm still gray I used to have black hair when I started coming 17 years ago and now it's all gone gray don't ask me why but it's the stress of life stress of home etc 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 anyway um, my background is I'm a chemical engineer and I've been in the field of safety now for 40 plus years. And uh, just to share very briefly about myself, um, my experience in safety has spanned quite a few years in, in the UK and for uh, 15 years now I have been with the National Safety Council and I've come to the region as a result of working with the NSC and uh, if you ask me how do I describe my experience in safety I'll summarize it in three words the good the bad and the ugly okay um, sad to say gentlemen that the ugly part is that I encountered three fatalities at work during my career and the worst thing you can ever do is to go to the family home and tell them that your son or your husband is not coming home and the family will ask you a question any idea what the question is why why thank you um, so what would you say to them why would you say that we have failed to provide a safe system of work would you say we didn't provide them with PPE what would you say we're still investigating Early, but early signs showed that there was a contributor human error. Okay, I don't want to dwell into the details of that, but a lot of the incidents themselves relate to lack of management control. Okay, the the bad. For those of you that know me, at the time I used to say I lost my job three times, then it now four times. Uh, a week before COVID. The National Safety Council decided to pull the plug out servicing the Middle East and then they said we no longer need your services. After 14 years with them they decided to um, let me go. So since then I've been working as a freelance but my mission it goes without saying it hasn't changed. I'm here to plant the seed of safety into you because it's now becoming very apparent that both myself and Mr. Hassan, we are reaching a retirement age 
We want to put our feet up and we want you to take over from us. You're still young, you're still dynamic. So please, <coughs> take safety with you. Make it personal. And safety is not about just work. It's about what you do at home as well. So today's session is really going to be looking at a common issue that a lot of people suffer from is contractors. And this is a global problem. This is not just a problem here. It's an international problem. So let's look at it in a bit more detail. Okay, so I'm just going to introduce the concept of contractors, contractor safety. I'm going to make reference to contractor safety management systems. Common topic you always talk about is leadership. How does leadership play a role in contractor safety? Why is it important? What are the benefits of leading contractor safety? With that comes engagement. We have to engage with the contractors. So we need to look at the process of um, contractor engagement. And then we'll wrap it up. And then uh, I'll take any questions uh, from the audience. So, what do contractors do? It goes without saying. Contractors are there to fill some skill gaps in your operations. They provide specialized expertise. And I use the word specialized expertise. <coughs> you have to be careful. What is expertise? They tell you they're experts, but are they? Or do they do everything? So it's an expertise. That's why you call them and help and support the workforce for specific projects and tasks. Equally, the problem with contractors is managing them introduces unique problems for every organization on this planet. And therefore, it requires different solutions to your safety management systems. With that in mind, it's worth saying that, yes, in the last 20 years or so, industries have made significant improvements with contractor safety, okay, in enhancing the requirements, the systems, the measures to reduce incidents. But statistics shows, and this comes from international research from both the UK and the US, basically stating that contract workers are five times more likely to be involved in serious incidents compared to direct employees. That's a fact. Okay? So therefore, the question to you is, are your current efforts are truly enough? Are you you, do you think you're doing enough to manage and control contractors? That's a question for you guys. Is there room for improvement? I'm sure there is. So let's go through the process and try and find out some of the things that we need to consider. So, what is a contractor? Textbook, dictionary? It's a person or an organization that they're not your employees, that contracts to supply materials, labor, part-time, full-time, okay? It's not an employee of the business. That will include people you bring on site for construction work, site repairs, maintenance, things that you don't want to do yourselves. Sorry? Chief Rice, Lane, as is your friend. Sorry? <laughs> is your friend, no? I know. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Sometimes you bring them um, machine contractors with special tools, cleaners, 
but contractors does not include, in this case, temporary or seasonal workers you bring on site for carrying out labor work, okay? Like supply deliveries, um, and therefore it comes under the direct of the organization or the client in question. Now, that's the official definition. Bearing in mind, not many, they are passionate about the work that they do. They claim they are professional. <laughs> okay, claim. They tell you we have pride in what we do. Very good. Very good. Okay, however, let me turn the table round and ask you, how do you define contractors? Before, Before you answer, answer that, sorry. The question is more open for you. you can yeah. answer. How would you define your contract? I'm not a director of you should answer. <laughs> <laughs> He's asking question, guys. Yes, sir. Any, any person undertaking a business yes. to perform and to uh, undertake this business yeah. could be uh, defined as a contractor. Fair enough. Any others? I have my own definition. Yeah. Go ahead, go ahead. Go so ahead. It's POV. From a uh, point of view, <laughs> from uh, HR point of view, it's to, redu to reduce the cost only. To reduce the cost. For, from the technical side, they want to squeeze them, especially during tight schedule, such as shutdown. Okay. So this is the contractor from more yeah, than a perception. Okay. What about the rest of you? Yes, sir. A company or a person who has a contract. Okay. Actually, without contract, you are not should be perform any kind of uh, activities. Yeah. Well, as you recognize, more and more industries now are outsourcing a lot of activities to contractors because it's cheaper, okay? But let's look at some aspects of contractors and see whether you agree or not. Can you see the slide or do you want to turn the light off? What's this guy doing? They are what we call the risk takers. Okay, do they know what a risk is? <coughs> do they know what a hazard is? Probably not. Okay, what about this? Yes. <laughs> Why didn't you tell me? I asked you what contractors are. They are what we call litter louts, they leave the rubbish behind. And sometimes they bring their rubbish from home and dump it on your site. <laughs> That's well, true. It's true. What about this one? <laughs> they are specialized. This is, this is not a contractor. Who do you think does this? You at home? <laughs> Come on. Remember, a contractor is any person that you bring in to carry out the task. They are specialists. These are supposed to be builders. They take shortcuts, don't they? Sometimes they're not even knowledgeable about the hazards and the risks. Now, this is in Bahrain. <laughs> Citizen. <laughs> so what are they doing, guys? I think they well, first of all, what is what is good? What are they doing? Is good. Two people holding the ladder. Okay, holding the ladder. They're wearing helmets. Two are wearing high visibility vests. No eye protection. Right. This guy is trying to drill a hole. Ergonomically, he's going to suffer. And that's. Here, around the corner, by the way, so it's not. Yeah, it's flag, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. 
What about this one? Oh my God. He's under the knee of the... Yeah. He's underneath the crane. It's not a crane even. I know it's not a crane, but... <laughs> I, I, th I think he's supporting this one to, as a hero. <laughs> They are assisting the workers. <laughs> <laughs> they are assisting. Well, <laughs> if they are assisting, we have a problem. Okay? Okay? There's no problem. We came, we took the problem. <laughs> now. I think These are strangers. Are they strangers? I think they are, it is in Bahrain. <laughs> Bahrain or... Now, actually, correction, this is not Bahrain, this is Saudi. This is across the causeway. <laughs> Same principle. Yes. They are strangers. Okay? It's difficult to understand why are they wearing a helmet inside. It's a common sense, no man. Even when you go into an office, some small uh, meeting, just to keep the helmet. Just keep the helmet? Yes. It's a habit, habit. It becomes a habit, yes. It's a habit, okay. Yeah. Well, think about that one. What about this one? <laughs> oh! <laughs> this is more strange. This is very risky. Very risky. If you but think hey, about it, how he jump over there? Well, yeah, that's a good question. <laughs> right? He should have proper equipment for the work. Yeah, but the question here is why this is happening? Because you see this every day. What I've shown you is not new. You've probably seen similar. And therefore, in my travel, right, I take photographs of these people just to put it to my library. <laughs> it happens, okay? What about this one? Oh, Believe it or not, this photograph I took when I was in Los Angeles on the A and the NSC conference, when I was staying over there. Right? As you can see, this is all. And then when you, and the Americans claim they have a very good contractor safety program. And look at this. They have here. And they provide everything for us. We're not lying there, Right? They set the scene. They tell you we are the best. Sorry? Yeah, he. Okay? In the safe saying in the lift, he just. Yeah. <laughs> His argument is that when I spoke to him, he said, look, he said, I'm wearing a harness. <laughs> but the harness is not even clipped. <laughs> uh, maybe the harness is not the, the correct one, not uh, suitable uh, for the man lift. Because for the man lift, there's a specific harness. Yeah. Which many people, they are not well, aware of it. But the problem you have is the fact that Part of the lifting device here is that you're not supposed to climb on it. Exactly. That's why harness, it will, uh, will be constri uh, uh, trick you to not move up. Okay. That's the anyway, the harness. I took this photograph because I thought it's in the US. <laughs> okay. What about this one? This is a classic one. Smart. Smart person. Smart person. <laughs> Concrete laying, right? The guy is here, trying to level the ground, and he's over here. Yes. Genius. Genius. <laughs> After some time, you will see a dog is moving around on that. <laughs> <laughs> or a cat, for that matter. Yeah. Okay? So. <coughs> now, this is only an example. I've got at least a hundred photographs, but we don't have time to show them all. But I can summarize 
All these slides I showed you earlier, and if you ask me how do I describe contractors, I use one word, cowboys. <laughs> Everything comes under cowboys, right? Yeah. They don't care. Yeah. All they want is the money. So, it puts emphasis on the client. And this is something <coughs> the client needs to be aware of. Because there is a tendency, and this is a classic example I'm going to share with you. Two weeks ago, I was in Saudi Arabia teaching and behavior-based safety, and the guys did an exercise where they had contractors come in to build a stage inside one of the rooms. And I said to the manager, this is not right. And his answer was, it's nothing to do with us. We have no control over these people. They have been brought from outside. Hello, it's in your premises. If some of them falls, collapses, and dies, you are responsible. Ah, yes, but it hasn't happened before. <laughs> <laughs> that's not, that's two weeks ago. Okay, so let's look at the contractor management system using four words starting with the letter P. It involves people, does it not? Planning, what does that mean? You plan for every contract work. You look at the processes. The processes would involve risk assessments, method statements, looking at the expertise of the people you bring on site, the training, the competence, but I want you to go one step further. Are they capable? Competent. No. Capable. capable goes beyond competence. They may have the skills, but bearing in mind they haven't been onto your site. Okay? They may have worked on the road pavements, but when they come into your facility, it's a completely different yes. sector. And they don't even know. What about productivity? What are we talking about here? Getting the work, getting the project done at the set time. So what happens when you bring contractors? If I think if one of them are missing, one or two are missing, that will make the life is miserable because the project will not be end up on a close. Okay. And what would happen in this case is that the client, they start charging you a penalty for late completion of the project. So it's a balanced system. You want me to do the task? I don't have the right tools. And therefore, in order to meet the deadline, what do I do? Shortcut. I start taking shortcuts. But hey, the client doesn't know. And skilled people and competent people will also be affected at the Exactly. So let's go a bit to the next step. Some of you may recognize this diagram, which is the PDCA cycle on management system. Start with planning. What happens in the planning? It's what we call pre-contract, before you bring them on site. <laughs> Assess the capability of these people. Get the right people for the job. I know you mentioned cost, right? But get the right people for the job. People who have skills, people that you have vetted, people that you have interviewed, 
find out their history. Have they done similar types of work before? The first thing you need to look at the contractor, show me your safety policy. And what would they do? They show you a copy and paste from somewhere else. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> some, some of the companies are having very good quality of the documentation. Yeah. But you need to have, in this case, you need to have a site visit to see real, exactly. real situation on site. It's what we call the pre-qualification. Pre yes, yeah. pre-qualification, yeah. Right? And from my past experience, the, the process of pre-qualification takes time, so you plan it in advance. You go and visit contractors with specialized fields and you assess them before you bring them on site. So whenever you need work, you bring them in based on their, their capability and competence. Don't leave it to the last minute. After all, production says we need the work done quickly. We haven't got time for assessment. And, and some companies, they will reduce contractor approved list, as you yeah. mentioned. Yeah. It is it's like a proof list, yeah. and anyway, they have the, uh, their documentation, yeah. visit the site, because later on during the year, if there's any projects, everything is ready. Exactly. Now, to complement what you're saying, okay, years ago, um, there was a training program that I um, not so much introduced, but I actually engaged. Right? It's what we call the Contractor Safety Passport Scheme, whereby contractors that come into your site have to go for a one or two day training. And they're issued with a passport, like a card with their photograph, which means that they have received the minimum training. Without that card, you can't get on site. Okay? I tried to introduce it here years ago, but we have it, but there's no. Yeah, we some uh, yeah. some projects. Yeah, but it's only the private sector is using it. Other yes. companies, they're not using it. In Oman, in Oman they have uh, the, the passport copy, and also they have one called uh, uh, one society. I don't want to mention the name. So they are monitoring all the institute. Yeah. Any complaint, they have a camera, they have everything yeah. to monitor. Mm -hmm. If case of any complaint, they can just open the camera and see, investigate. Is that training correct? Is there any failure? Is there anything? Yeah. It's a good system in monitoring this. Yeah. But it needs to be led by somebody yeah. higher up. Yeah. Yes. The and that, the, the, the top one is the is the one who's controlling and giving authority to all the institute yeah. and monitoring that. I will have words with <laughs> <laughs> the Ministry of Labour. Well, I have no idea. Okay. So, do effective communication. What is communication? No. Between the, between the workers, you mean? And Def the management. No, hang on, hang on. Define communication. What is communication? Uh, Give and take. <laughs> understand the language between two two persons and above. Okay. Close, close. Okay. Sending and receiving. Yeah. Communication is a process that involves a sender and a receiver. And between the sender and the receiver, there is a form of understanding. Yes. Do you remember? Feedback. Feedback, right? And you have to recognize that communication is a vital component in safety, including dealing with contractors. And you have to overcome barriers. There are barriers for communication. Any ideas what these barriers are? Language. 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 The language. This is the most common. Okay. Language. Fairness. And the level of education. Level of education, yes. The fairness. The law. The law. Fairness. Culture. Culture. Yeah. 
Yeah, we can say this a new thing is the fairness. You can't just, I can listen to you, but you are not able to listen to me because you have high power. So that's what well, we have the, a lot well, of Well, actually, you're right. It's the position that people hold. Yeah. Okay? That. So, based on that, based on that, you can summarize what you just said. It's fear. People are afraid of the, because of the position that you hold. There is a chair here. So to take an example, okay. Mr. Yasser, can I borrow you for a second? Yeah, please. Okay. Imagine, hypothetically, you are a VP of your organization, hypothetically. Don't let the job come to go to your head, okay? Okay. <laughs> right? <laughs> right? And you enter a facility, any facility you have, with no PPE, okay? How many people would actually stop you? No one. Hang on. Could be no one. Okay. Could be one. Could be two. Two. Maximum one or no. And how many people are employed in your company? Many. Give me a number. Uh, we can say above uh, 1,000. 1,000. Why? Why are people not challenging you? Because of my position. What is no. your position? Hang on, hang on. You are fired if you, if you talk to me like that. Really? Yeah. As a vice president. Not all. But you have a safety policy, correct? And your policy says every person is responsible for safety, correct? Correct. And you empower people in, as far as safety is concerned, correct? Correct. So that means the system is not working. Exactly. Exactly. Because of the thing. Hang on. Yeah, true. Because people are afraid of you. But how can we deal with that? How would you deal with that situation here? Then, for example. What? Well, yes, but it's great. It's a it's a top down now. Yes. How can you talk to him? Right? How would you approach him? Um, can I have a piece of paper somewhere? Okay, and, I, and I'll tell you something which is really funny. Right? I asked the same I, question. I'll bring a safety helmet and give it to him. No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> a year ago, when I was teaching in Saudi, I asked the same question, and the guy said, I'll take the PPE policy, and I say to him, this is your signature here, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> nice. Right? This is automatic termination. There's no doubt about it. But you have to be diplomatic. You have to go to the VP or whatever and say, welcome to our facility. Just to remind you, this is a PPE area. Give him whatever he needs. Right? What's he going to do? Fire you for that? You would be happy for that. Exactly. Now, but what would you say if the VP is actually testing the system? There's a change now. Management are going in testing the system. Because if no one or maybe only one stops him, what's the VP going to do? He's going to attack or go to the supervisor. And he will say, what kind of people are working here? I walked in to test the system and nobody stopped me. That means the system, the communication system, has failed miserably. Now, stay where you are. Can I borrow you? <laughs> You're not just sitting there looking pretty, right? Imagine similar situ scenario, but he's a contractor. He comes in in your facility, with no PPE, how many people will stop him? <laughs> Why? Why? They are human beings, aren't they? So why are you treating him differently than him? Culture. Thank you. Don't sit down, gentlemen. Now, so communication is vital. Yes, sir. I try sometimes, you know, as a kind of Westerner, I go to any construction site, I give instruction and they just follow you know i have nothing to do with the site i'm just curious and, then, oh, and 
and they just follow without having even the, the idea that who I am. <laughs> so, <laughs> communication is vital. And by the way, what we're talking about is what you do at work. I'm not interested how you communicate at home, okay? That's a different form of communication, which is normally one way. <laughs> if I'm talking rubbish, tell me. <laughs> this is universal. This is the same problem everywhere, right? So, no feedback. But the question is, are you a good listener? Think about it. Are you a good listener? Yes, no? You know, when, when situation I faced before, you know, when the companies I work for, uh, at that time I was new, so I didn't know all the managers there. So uh, I was in a construction site. Uh, I was standing uh, with uh, a safety officer. I was talking uh, with him. At that time, uh, the manager came. I didn't know him. So he came with formal suit and everything without without PPE, and I was about to go to go to uh, talk to him, but uh, the safety officer uh, caught me. He holded me and he said, "You know, you know this guy." I said, "Okay, I, I didn't, I don't know him, but he cannot access to the site without a uh, helmet and the PPE." He said, "This is the son of the owner." <laughs> so, same rules apply. Thank you for sharing that. So, communication. Okay? Be a good listener. Don't forget. God created you with two ears and one mouth. So you listen more than you talk. Zip it. Okay? So, we define the scope of work, establish the expectation, pre-qualification and selection, the contractors, the work, everything. Make sure you have agreements, inspections, risk assessments, matter of statements, who's going to do the work, permits control of visitors, everything. So you check. You manage the work as part of your system. It goes round, keep records, evaluate. <coughs> okay? It's a system. And it's the same as your ordinary safety management system. But this now is focused on dealing with contractors and different elements that will help you, okay? We cannot say appropriate, sorry, as a lawyer, uh, agreement should be perfect agreement, not appropriate. Appropriate is not uh, complete, 100%. So, so as to be on the safe side, eh, you have to uh, develop and very, very uh, appropriate, very uh, complete agreement from legal side. Yeah, I, I recognize that. Yeah. And, and thank you for mentioning this, because one thing that safety people need to know is that every document you generate in safety becomes a legal document and can be used as evidence in a court of law. Yeah. That includes permits, that includes everything. So be careful what you write down. Okay, think about that. So, leadership, what's that about? Well, it goes without saying, if leadership doesn't show interest in contractors, then what will happen? What do you think happens? The system will fail. You'll have incidents, the project will stop, and maybe the authorities will actually prevent you from, from working. They can close you down. Yes? When I was the managing director, I became in shorts and flip-flops to the side. Very fantastic. 
That is to unfortunate. Be a to be a good example. Yes. Well, by definition, yes, but it starts with you. You are all leaders of safety. So you have to lead by example. Do you know? Yes, no? Yes, no? yes okay. So just to deviate slightly. Okay. Sorry? Yeah. But let's take a quick example here. Do you think you are good drivers? We try. We try. There you go. Here's another politician here. Okay. So, how many of you get angry while you're driving? <laughs> Just rehearse the question. Sorry? Just uh, re say the question in other words. Who is not getting angry? <laughs> okay. So, what do you do when you get angry? If you're driving. Try to release. So in other words, you, you, vent, you vent your anger on other drivers. Yes. And if it was a lady driving, causing you the problem, what are you going to do? I don't want to stop rapping so much. <laughs> okay. By the way, men is giving chances more than ladies. Well, that's a different race. That's a different race. And trust me, if you go to Saudi Arabia and now a woman is driving, the... the their behavior is even worse now. Seriously. They're using hand signals or whatever. <laughs> so, what happens in this scenario is that when you have your children and your family in the car and you get angry, you're going to still use the same language, right? Yeah, yeah, okay, all right, okay. And then when your children learn the language from you, and exercise it at home, what do you do? You will smack the child and you say, where did you learn this language from? And they point the finger at you. <laughs> That's what leading by example is about. I'll do something about, uh, this is heavy for me. I <laughs> you had accidents. Some oh, accidents, they went to the traffic uh, department in Ghana Mall. I know the officer of that. Mm -hmm. And my son is asking that traffic man. I have a question. Okay, go ahead. Uh, it is allowed that people using the phone while driving? He said, no. He said, my father always uses the phone. <laughs> <laughs> he said, okay, quiet. I, I said, I rest my case. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, Few of the things we need to be thinking about is the benefits of leading and being the effective leader. Okay? What's humanistic means? You have a moral duty to ensure that people that come in your facility they go home safely. That's that's the main duty. Apart from what the legislation and the law says so, it's the right thing to do. Okay? Every country you go to, there's a legal requirement to manage yes. and control contractors. Okay? What about financial? Cost of incidents, both the direct and indirect cost. The indirect cost is the cost that no, not many people consider. One of them being the damage the incident will have on your image. Reputation. Because if an incident happens, your customer is going to go somewhere else. And it may take you years to develop your image, but you can lose it just like that. Yeah. And also, one of the other things to bear in mind 
is you want to retain the contractors who are good. You want to use them again. Why do you start the whole process again? So you have this approved list of contractors and you know they're competent and therefore you should be able to use them again and again and again. And as Mr. Yasser mentioned earlier, it's a headache. The contractors are a headache. A big headache. How many panadols do you take? <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I try to release my anger on them, you know. <laughs> I stop, you know, the work. When they solve the problem, I let them to work. So they will, you know, the, our company will punish them because they are delayed. They are not following safety uh, which instruction which we get. Yes. So work will be stopped. They, if the work will stop, it means some money. So they have to listen the last. But you have an age. You still got a few gray hairs. No, actually, uh, <laughs> I, I use I use the last step. You know. To, I know. I'm only I'm only joking. Yeah. It is stressful. It is really stressful. Okay. So humanistic. They are all human beings. They have families waiting for them. Yes. Indeed. Okay. You, in your weekends, I see a lot of families go to the malls and the food quarter or whatever. They have families. Every person has a family waiting for them. So when that person doesn't come home, what impact this has on the family? Think about it. So that's why we talk about humanistic. They are human beings. I know sometimes they can be a pain. Right? <laughs> right? But that's life. Very important element. Very important element. And one of the things that you need to ask yourself the question why is it that the contractor is behaving the way he is? What's your answer? Any ideas? Can, can, I, can, I, can, I, can I use this? Please? Yeah, please. Uh, Same principle applies. Okay, but that's part of motivation. Uh, you know, like we cannot say BBE, like you know, safety equipment, like you know, they are not providing. Them. They are looking, you know, they are showing that we are looking after production. We are not looking after you. Yeah. So more I mean, So. So. When contractors behave the way they do, three things I want you to consider. <coughs> they don't see what they're doing is wrong. They don't know how to do it because nobody has shown them the correct way. <coughs> but unfortunately, we as humans always <coughs> criticize the contractor for doing this whatever task incorrectly. But deep down, think about this. So, yeah. So the slides I showed you earlier, when the guy is standing on tins of paint, why is he doing that? They are not provide for answer, short cut answer. Sure. Or they have, they, they have some. But because it's uh, maybe three, three floor down, so he, he uses it. Well, that's the problem. <laughs> you ask him to do a task, if you don't give him the right tools, what would they do? They will improvise. Yeah. He wants to get paid. Yeah. 
Because you say to you, you wanted the room painted? Yes. How? It's my problem, not your problem. You didn't provide him with a ladder. You follow? Yes. Yeah, but also the question of the responsibility. Yeah. I mean, if he has knowledge, then he's supposed to okay have yeah. ladder in hand. And they say, you also say to the guy, okay, I cannot perform my task as of uh, the health and safety uh, regulation. The point to follow this up with. <laughs> Supervise. Do we provide adequate supervision? Yeah. The supervising, the supervisor are enforcing people yeah. for yeah. this, doing this. But the reality of it. In the absence of supervision, what happens? People take shortcuts, right? As we have a saying in the UK, I don't know whether you have something similar here, is that when the cat is out, the mouse will play about. <laughs> we have it already. You yes. have it? Yeah. Just enters by the back back, 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 back door. <laughs> right? That's the reality of it. Supervision is key. I will say something now. We have a lot of British saying that was the fault of the Bobka building, not Bobka energy. Actually, there the system is very strong in the airport because they're cheating the aircraft, the things. And even though the, any any contractor entering the site, they want to do any job for Bobka, their responsibility of the engineer to fully give explain them the system step by step. Anything, even though they use their work permit, yeah, they they actually they. They get our support, but we issue the permit for Bafco. Bafco again, they issue permit for the contractor, yeah. and they have fully time safety to sit with the person, or not not the safety, sorry, the engineer should be full time to be with this with, with the contractor on the site. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. But we follow exactly as you mentioned. This is the first yeah. one. Yeah. yeah, we follow all these. Which is good. But what I'm trying to do is really, I'm, I'm most of you probably have come across this before. Right? There is no one solution that fits all. You have to manage it, you have to assess it and control it. How? It's entirely up to you. I'm just giving you the tools. So financial, well, here we go. If we reduce the injuries, having an effective system, you will see production goes up. That's reality. Okay. No absence. Sorry? No absence. Yeah. <laughs> what about image? <clears throat> Think about your customer. Who is your customer? They have to trust you. They're the ones that are paying in any industry sector. Because you have to focus on satisfying the customer. So do whatever it takes, but make sure you get it right first time. That's something you need to think about. Sorry? Either trust or run. Yeah, trust or run. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Legal. I don't want to go. Yes. And we have a gentleman here. I'll keep away. <laughs> okay. In the labor law of Bahrain, there is a special chapter for safety. I'm sure. A special chapter for safety. Yeah. This, this indicates the, how the law takes care of the safety uh, in the business yeah. for all contractors. Yes. And there are, and there are uh, certain provisions wherein the contractor uh, can be even taken to jail without, and also paying compensation uh, if he's not uh, uh, employing the proper trained people yeah. in dangerous places, you don't provide them with the tools for doing the business, as as we have seen from your bad contractors. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It happens. Yes. It happens. Yes. Okay. What about relationships? You want to hire and keep the best contractors. You don't want the cowboys, right? Because one thing I want you to think about 
is think about you as a person, right? When you finish work, I want you to go home and not worry about what the contractors are doing, right? Because that will, why are you laughing? It will stress you out. Because this is my question, what keeps you awake at night? And you're just laughing, that means your contractors. <laughs> right? That's reality. So have a, a good system, build relations with your contractors. After all, these contractors that you have come in, they have the skill. And they are probably also learning new skills from your facility. And therefore, why do you let them go? Because they can apply that skill somewhere else and you've lost that particular time and effort that you're dealing with. Just think about it. Sometimes you, you will get tired until the contractor becomes on, on what you want. Yeah. After, by the time the contract is finished. So again, now you, a new contractor will come. So okay. again, you, you need to, to start the work again. Yeah. So, a, a cycle. A cycle. So treat them as your family, if you understand what I'm saying. You know, one uh, the biggest, biggest problem in you know, uh, contractor, you are kept change people. You know, workers every time. So yep. this is... That's reality. Disaster. That is reality. No, but there are some, some sectors that are... Uh, somebody uh, uh, next to me, they are not allowed to keep changing. Isn't that people? Yeah, I don't think it does. Well, the thing is, it's, it's easily said than done because sometimes, you know, contractors, if they misbehave, you can kick them out, yeah. right? But they come back again under a different name, <laughs> shave their head. <laughs> that's what they do. Unless you have a system for management and control, that's what they do. That's why I call them cowboys. You didn't believe me when I said that. I've experienced this, seriously. That's why you need the passport scheme, as we mentioned earlier, to manage and control it. You are the client, you decide. <coughs> so, when we're looking at contractors, look at the relationship, the management, and now the leadership. We'll go through that. So, the criteria for ensuring a successful engagement process, planning. If you don't plan for the contractors coming on site, then you will plan for a disaster. Induction. Contractors don't know anything about you. They're not even interested on what you do. They're only interested in doing the job, getting paid, and going home. That's what they're interested in. How you manage contractors on site, that's gonna be key for you. How you gonna monitor the success and reviewing the work. Five key steps for you to consider. Planning, you've got management, and we've got leadership. As far as management is concerned, you carry out pre-qualification before you bring them on site. You notify them what the hazards are of your facility. You evaluate the risks and what mitigation techniques have you put in place. Identify and train people that need to be involved. People may need to have specialized training because of the risk of your industry you're in. Leadership. This is an area where it's lacking. Do we understand the contractor's culture? Because all you're concentrating on is here. Do we understand their culture? Do we engage contractors, owners, and leaders at each step? Think about it. Do you have regular talks, meetings with contractors? Any shortcomings with the contractor program? That's what leadership should be doing. Because at the moment, you're only focusing here. 
That's the next step I need you to start considering. Okay? <coughs> what about health and well-being programs? They are human beings, after all. Share with them. What can we do to make your life easier? Not just say, well, if you want first aid, go to the hospital or whatever. That's what we're looking at is institute well-being programs that will help. Induction. Tell people what the job is, where it is. Look at the ability of the contractor. What is your expectations from the contractor? What's the time frame? And with the time frame comes the budget. Okay? There we go. What's the level of risk to be, con to be considered? Now, what about leadership? Walk the talk. Have you heard the term? Walk the talk. Lead by example. Articulate cultural expectation. In other words, what is your culture? How are you going to reinforce this with the contractors? Think about your values and principles. Because if they get it wrong, it affects you. Be clear and concise about discipline and fair. Don't discipline people because you don't like them. Check and reinforce the effectiveness of the induction program. So that's what the leaders do. When the contractors are on site, what do we do? Look at their capability, experience. Can they do the task? Oops, your safety policy, where is it? Show it to me. Is it current? Usually in the drawer, deep. In the drawer? Yes. <laughs> How old is it? <laughs> Who signed it? You have to put it there. In a very well, close the example I want to share with you is that that's what really you need to think about. What drives safety in any organization is the policy. Look at the document. From past experience, I've seen documents that are 10 years old. The person who signed it is dead. <laughs> Sorry to say this, but... Well, maybe by accident and signed, huh? <laughs> No comment. Okay? Management looks at health and safety key performances, KPIs. Both lag and lead indicators. The qualification and skills. The selection and employment of subcontractors. If you think contractors are cowboys, subcontractors are even cowboy square. <laughs> <laughs> very important, subcontractors, very important, and it should be in very clear uh, contract. Yeah. Otherwise, there will be many problems. And, and even subcontractors should be approved by the main club. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Other thing to consider, look at risk assessments. Risk assessments should be um, suitable and sufficient, relevant to the task, not copy and paste from somewhere else, from Google and say, this is our risk assessment. You can see it straight away, okay? Ask for method statements the details on how they're going to be doing the task. When raw materials comes in, what happens, and when the waste, who's going to take the waste out? Who's going to take the rubbish out? If you don't specify it, they will dump it at your grounds and go. Actually, the risk assessment should be built against the uh, method statement. Yeah. Once you have method statement clear, then you can build up your exactly. risk assessment. So the two work hand in hand. Yes. And then you need to add the environment where are you going to have exactly. that task. So your method statement should also reflect what permits may be required. 
Okay, that needs to be included. Also, contractors on site, check for records of training. Statistics. What about citations? In other words, have they been fined for incorrect work? Legal compliance, are they complying? One of the things about legal compliance, by the way, is you need to ask the question, do they have sufficient insurance? Yes, yes. Okay? Do they have sufficient... Do they follow the labor law? I rest my case. I leave it to you to decide. Okay. I'm only telling you. Ask the question. Don't assume they have. You know what happens when you make assumptions. In our risk, uh, our method statement and risk assessment, we put one of the items, the, the document number and the expiry date. Yeah. So by expiry date, we can reject the documentation. Yeah. And, and no doubt, um, and, and I've picked on this many years ago, I don't know whether you have the same here, presumably you have in Bahrain, but every contracting company has to be registered as, a, as an entity. And sometimes, you know, we have it as what we call company house in the UK. So you go and look into that company and tell you who the directors are and when it was established and so on and so on. You probably have the same, because on occasions when we checked, that certificate is expired and nobody, because you have to pay for it, contractors find a way around it. So check. I have a question, is there any kind of regulation? How often uh, health and safety regulations should be updated? Like uh, they have an expired date for one year or two years because some of them... Depends on which standard you want to follow. Depends on their manual. Your manual should be followed as you know, ISO. Yeah, but the uh, manual also written by the company itself as well. Yeah. And then you have to uh, review it and check it and... Uh, well, it goes without saying, and our lawyer here will probably <laughs> <laughs> say the same. The law you have here is what we call the Enabling Act. It tells you that you have to have systems in place. It doesn't go into the details on how to go about doing it. So you, as an organization, any breach is the main law. You are in breach of the law. And therefore, as a result, there are standards that have been developed, updated. And this is the role of safety people. It's your job to update and check. Because nobody's going to do it to you for you automatically. You have to keep searching. But don't use the registration as the driver for safety. Do you follow? Use the legislation as the framework go one step ahead. It's the right thing to Very do. Very good. Very good. Go a step ahead. Yeah. yeah. It's the right thing to do because you care. That's the reason. Not because the law says so. In other words, move from compliance to best practices. The best practice. It's like, just sorry, a few seconds there. Risk assessment, the best practice for routine activities, maximum three years. This is the best practice in Bahrain. For any projects, as, as, as I mentioned, for any projects, even if it is duplicated, we need to reach it all the risk assessment and with the yeah. statement yeah. and issue it with the new, new, new needs. Okay. So, with management, <coughs> obtain references. In other words, if the contractor said, I have built this tower, the tallest tower in uh, in Bahrain, really? Give me your contact details. Don't assume anything. Find out. Find out from the other company, from the clients, how is the these contractors? Define their competence. What issues? What concerns you have? We uh, have the you know safety manager. He's going to check. Like you know, HR or uh, the you know what we call the department who <coughs> want to uh, make a contract with the contractor, yes. they will ask for uh, get, get uh, safety manager. 
You mean uh, feedback of the previous? No, I mean here. Normally, normally, the way you set it up is part of the pre-qualification yes. is done by a team. It's not based on one person. Yes. So the team would be somebody from safety, somebody from uh, quality, quality, somebody from HR, HR, HR somebody HR. from purchasing, right? Yes. And you all go together as a team and to actually assess. And they should, they should have their yes. tools. Yeah. Yeah. Tools. Exactly. Yeah. That's it. You have a checklist. And if you That's want a checklist, I can give it to you, right? Mm -hmm. After all, what you're doing, right, is you're assessing the contractors for your needs. If there is any doubt, put a red mark straight away. You are the client, after all. Go ahead. You usually, usually for the safety, safety for if it is failed, the pre-qualification mm. fails. Yeah. But for the others, they can do again. Yeah. Uh, we have 10 minutes or 15 Oh, minutes. sorry, I'll speed up, sorry, apologies. <laughs> apologies, okay, let's go quickly. Leadership, measure the competence of the job. Include contractors in toolbox tools, why not? Check and validate the risk assessment and method statements. Regular inspection, audits, compliance, goes without saying. Provide feedback, contractors need feedback. Two-way communication, don't forget. Monitoring, what are we doing with monitoring? Monitor the progress on a daily basis. That's what management do. Are permits followed? Are they following the rules? Are they complying with your standards and procedures? Are they carrying out the work correctly and safely? Leadership, what they do is they take consistent action any deviation and repeat offenders and use this the word here repeat offenders how many times have you given the red card or the yellow card to these people right recognize and reinforce safe behavior you're doing a good job you're always wearing your helmet and so on give credit engage in open communication reviewing the work Management, leadership. Regularly look at your performance violations. Identify areas where the parties can work together to improve performance during the contract. Document everything, legal requirement. Leadership, develop a system for any identified issues that you may need to consider, deficiencies. Any opportunities. Any opportunities yes. for improvement. What went well, what needs to improve. Nobody is perfect. Yes. Okay? And ask the question, how do you maintain continuous improvement? I have made the experience then because we see a lot of issues at the site, yes. so we're coming to the site to check, and then all he always criticizes and he says, because we need to highlight the mistakes, of course, to, if there's an incentive and they do something correct, but here, highlighting the mistakes is so much, the people are so resistant uh, to acknowledge these things. Well, this is where the leadership comes. It's on the art of communication, giving feedback. People don't like feedback, that's the reality. Yeah. Even human beings, nobody wants, wants to know how good they're doing or how bad, because it's the bad they're afraid of, but it's the way you engage with people. Yeah. Build trust, don't forget. Subcontractors, what's the issue? Okay, make sure you have good arrangements. Why are you laughing, Mr. Ali? <laughs> <laughs> because we are facing many issues with the I'm sure. Okay, make sure there are set down rules with the main contracting company because they are in charge. Okay, that it's the main contractor's responsibility to know and vet the 
subcontractors before they come on site. They have to manage them and control them. They have to ensure that the subcontractors comply with your safety rules, standards, and methods, and procedures. Engage, get them involved in hazard recognition, reporting unsafe practices, and identifying at risk behaviors. Challenges. Okay. What challenges are you going to face? These are the new slides I've added. Okay. Thank you. Inefficient onboarding. What does that mean? Okay. So basically, onboarding is the process by which the new hired contractors go through before they begin work. Okay. Therefore, you are reducing the risk and improving efficiency. Okay. If you don't have effective onboarding system in place, it could cause problems to the project, increase delays, costs, and also people start taking shortcuts to try and get the work done. So how are we going to deal with that? Okay. They start on time. Okay. Two. The right people for the job. That's hard. You have here something called Wasta, right? <laughs> <laughs> I know you, you can come and work, right? <clears throat> Make sure you get the right people to do the task. Okay? Also, if you're going to have a system, keep it simple. If you're going to have a complex documentation system, it's going to cause havoc for you. Other challenges for communication, right? As we said, communication is vital. Inadequate communication can cause misunderstanding. You already told me language is a problem. It's a headache for you. As a result, people miss deadlines and you have problems. Therefore, Ensure that. Yes, yeah, sorry, you're going to say something. Yes, uh, we do sometimes, or not sometimes, but uh, two schedules. One to show the client because he's normally not aware of any procedure and you want everything quickly, and then one as well internally because they have sometimes expectations which they cannot be fulfilled. Plus, when they come variation, they are surprised that oh, they're either prolonging or delay. You know how you just change a little? Yeah, but it has a chain of reaction and the variation. Yeah. Yeah. So, solution, set clear communication channels, especially if you're dealing with language, you may bring people who can actually translate. The problem is the message can be misinterpreted in the translation. So watch out for that. Okay. Keep checks on what people are doing. Even if you are looking at instructions, use pictograms so that people can understand from the pictograms rather than detailed text. If it's detailed text, people are not going to read it. Okay? Ensure that the contractor bring their own supervisor, person who's in charge. You deal with that person. You can't deal with every single contractor or subcontractor. You don't have time for that. That's not your job. And with that in mind, there's no confusion, and people know what needs to be done. So you come as a foreman. Yeah, uh, yeah. Call it a foreman. Sometimes I call them supervisor. Right? Bring anybody in from the contracting company. Other challenges: lack of visibility of performance. It's well known that a lot of organizations can't produce statistics on performance of contractors. Okay? And therefore, the tracking system will be spotty. You don't know what people are doing, how good they are doing, their attendance, their performance. Inconsistent feedback could lead to that as well. Okay? There is no standard key performance system for contractors. 
There never has been one because nobody spends time looking at their performance. So the result, okay, is as a result, you know, their productivity goes down because nobody's monitoring how good their effectiveness. Taking that into account, the solution, look at the job specific requirements and set key performance indicators for that particular task. Engage with the workers and home in on continuous improvement as key. Okay? Give feedback. As you said, people don't like to receive feedback. It's probably you. You don't know how to give feedback. Because you always go on the negative straight away. So you need some coaching. It has to be uh, fair enough that you need to give them the good points. Yeah. And then you give them the area for improvement. Yeah. But if you establish the good relationship with these people yes. and build trust, they will welcome the feedback. Yes. Do you follow? It's a process. It's a system. Yes, sir. Yeah. I, I, it was an experience that they said, oh, no, we did it last, last 10 years like this, and they continue. Even there's improvement in technology and these things. Uh, I mean, it's, uh, even with uh, the health class, I mean, with experience and these things. And no, no, no. Let's do it like this. It's, it's a task, it's a task, it takes time, and you have to keep working at it. Okay, compliance. This is one of the biggest headaches you have, right? A lot of contractors don't comply, they don't want to comply. Okay, if you don't comply, if or, or if they don't comply, you are in trouble. You as a client, in trouble as well, because you're bringing them on your facility, right? And non-compliance could lead to incidents and as a result may impact your operations, especially if someone gets hurt. Okay? Some of the issues is compliance because these folks, their policies, their procedures, their risk assessment is all out of date. Nobody has bothered to check it. They don't have the expertise to do it. So therefore, make sure they follow correct compliance. Okay? Follow the standards, whether it's OSHA, European directives, even Bahrain law, whatever. Keep records of their activity and compliance and find gaps in the system. In other words, do a gap analysis. Lack of engagement, what does that mean? They're not involved. They provide you with expertise to support your business. However, they leave with the knowledge and skills from your workplace and take it somewhere else. That's sad. Some contractors, they decide to leave because they're not interested in you. Because you haven't engaged them. They're not interested in you. You haven't made them feel welcome. So what do you do? Oops, sorry. Engage, implement measures to look after the contractors, help and support them throughout the life of the project. So, why engagement? This is not because the law says so. Okay? People need to feel confident and happy to come and work for you. Because contractors, they have a home, they have a family waiting for them. Remember, bringing contractors on site and not managing and leading the process is like letting a loose tiger <laughs> in your facility. Who's the tiger? <laughs> okay? A recipe for disaster. And finally, this, I'll leave you with this thought. Map out the learning of contractor safety. Because acceptance of failures that you have identified leads to innovation and excellence. And with this, gentlemen, that's the end of my presentation. Any questions? I will send the presentation to you. I have a comment. You may have a comment, yes, sir. Yes. 
thanks for this very uh, informative yes. lecture. And uh, uh, we have learned many things. Oh, have you? Oh, that's good. <laughs> <laughs> However, in fact, uh, it is very difficult to be in line with what you have mentioned. Mm -hmm. And uh, in Bahrain, I think there is culture of safety. Because many, many companies we see every time they put a notice, we have, we have completed thousand hours without any accident. And this is very good. And all, all contractors should take care of this and should be guided by this. Uh, apart from this, as I have mentioned, uh, in law in Bahrain, in the labor law, we have very clear chapter regarding safety and all contractors should be aware of what is there, it's very important. And uh, in, the, in the labor court, we have so many uh, decisions regarding lack of responsibility for the contractors, and there are very tough uh, judgments against them, not just to uh, penalize them, but to make sure that the system war is in line with good safety for anybody who enters any place. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Yes. Amir, thank you very much. Thank you for the presentation. I think you summarized a whole course, a five day course. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you for this. I try. Uh, a few comments. Yeah. Uh, one uh, would be I think we need to change the way we look into contractors. Yeah. So if we still keep uh, telling them cowboys, we will. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. That's me too. So I think we need to, to consider the, yeah, yeah, we need I know, to I know. change the way we look at it. But changing the culture takes time. Of course. Oh, yeah. Right. Starting from yeah. today. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So this is one second. Um, I believe it all goes back to the way we select contractors because um, I know that everybody here has worked with a contractor before. And we all know that uh, contractors are selected based on the price, how the much price, the company yes. is, still the case. is interested to pay uh, yeah. these contractors. So uh, we cannot expect uh, somebody to come uh, with very high standards, and we are paying them this much. So they will, so they will, yeah, never come prepared. They will ne never come with the right tools. Be unfair, you know. They don't have the policies and procedures that we expect them to have. Again. That is the culture, that is the, and it's a global problem because any project that you you have, right, the leadership will always try and trim the cost. Eventually, but, you are left to the bare bone. What I mean, when you look, seriously, when you when you, when, you, when, you, when we are looking to improve the culture of the contract, mm -hmm. we need first look to improve the culture of the management, the way of their think. You hit the nail on the head. <laughs> <laughs> Well, the management money, I think they, they will always go to the cause because they, they have certain uh, KPIs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's definitely, yes. That's their mindset. To maintain, yes. but at the end, that comes at the cost of the yeah, course, yeah, overall. Yeah. 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 But it will take time for the culture to change. And that's where you come in. You are the enforcers, you are the negotiators. Go and sell it. <laughs> Be good salesman. <laughs> and uh, last, uh, Namir. Uh, as I said, Yanni, I know that the majority of people here work with contractors before, so I want to hear the other part of the story. How yeah. does it feel, Yanni? I, I, for, me, <laughs> for me, as my experience, yes. you know, last 20 years, I have seen many contract development, to be honest, in mm -hmm. Bahrain. Mm -hmm. Especially the culture has been started to change mm -hmm. gradually, uh, especially in PPE. They, now they have started, they have, they have their own standard PPE design, with the logo and uh, uh, the language of the safety become improved now with all uh, uh, employee. No, I mean, Munir, uh, we've been criticizing contractors now for an hour and a half. <laughs> <laughs> but what do contractors say about the, the clients? What are the challenges then? Yes. That's what, that's what I mean by the other part of the story. I don't know this situation. I can't go beyond that. Also. <laughs> Maybe I can share that. Our uh, first, first contractor here. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, uh, Mr. Namir. Uh, it's my pleasure.
like to thank Mr. Namir for a brief uh, presentation of so the interaction. Also, I would like to thank our colleagues also who attended. And special thanks for Al Mashra uh, Training Center for uh, supporting us and also uh, sponsor us with the bringing Mr. Namir. A very long years ago, we tried myself and Hassan to bring him. But we have good, a, a good opportunity. He's yeah. available in yeah. Bahrain, and, okay. and I'm always available. So please, <laughs> <laughs> well, Bahrain is awesome. <laughs> <laughs> the award available, yes. <laughs> please, <laughs> So please don't hesitate. Inshallah. So thank you, Mr. Namir. Okay, it's a pleasure. Thank please you. accept our. So oh, thank you very much. Thank, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. It's a great pleasure to be here and, and to be with a, with, a, with a family of the Bahrain Health and Safety Society. I wish you all the best, gentlemen. Please, go and sell it. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you again for coming. Thank you again, Governor. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.